Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us for another episode of Condo Insider. My name is Jane Sugimura, and I'm your, going to be, I'm, I'm your host today uh, for this uh, episode. And we're going to be talking about condo documents and how you, know, how you get them and what's the process and what are issues relating to getting the documents. And I have with me as my guest today, uh, Raylene Tenno. She's the treasurer of the Hawaii Council of uh, Community Associations and their program director. Thank you for joining me, Raylene. Well, thank you for having me again here, Jane. Yeah, we're going to have to make this a Raylene and Jane <laughs> show. <laughs> okay, let's talk about condominium documents. My favorite subject. Yeah, I know. That's why you're here. <laughs> And, you know, so, so what is it with condo documents? I mean, it, this just seems, you know, it, it seems like when I go to the legislature, uh, every year there's always a bill regarding condo documents. And then a few years ago, uh, Senator Ross Baker, you know, and she's the one who hears all the condo. She finally put together this statute and she put it and it's one it's 514 B 154. And it talks about all of the documents throughout right. The chapter, yeah. and so it's in one place. One so if anybody wants to know what documents you you can get from your condominium and how you get them, and uh, what you have to do, you go to five fourteen B one fifty four, and that's where she put them because she said she was really tired of having to deal with this, and every year, and there are different sections of the statute. Yeah, all, all over the place, and right. so now they are in all in Together. one place. Yeah. So right. that, that's the only place you, ha you, you have to go and you can talk, you know, it tells you about any document that you could possibly want. So I guess the issue is, so, so what kind of documents can an owner get from the association? Almost essentially everything, but there's some that take time to research and get. So you're going to have to pay the fees to, for someone in the managing agent to get those fees, I mean, to get those documents for you or to look them up. So if you're an owner and you want a document, who do you go to? Well, first thing I would go to is to the, um, the RICO website and pull up the, um, the owner affidavit in mm -hmm. order to get the docs because you have to get it notarized, saying that you're not going to you know, use it for erroneous purposes. You're using it just for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and get it notarized. And, and then there's another document that they have also on the site that has um, kind of a list of common documents that you can get or that's available or that's used by the managing and, agents. You, you mentioned RICO. What is RICO? Uh, regulated Industries Complaints something. Complaint Office. Yeah, Complaint Office. And this is part of the state of Hawaii. Part of DCCA. Right. And so if anybody wanted to go, you can just Google RICO, R-I-C-O. Correct. And uh, it would pop up. Right. And, and then just go, go to the real estate condominium section. And um, there's a lot of tutorials that they have there for condos, a mm -hmm. lot. They even have a little um, pamphlet uh, regarding um, condominium documents mm -hmm. that should be read first before you take that, that task on. Right. And I, I guess the reason why this is, is such a, a, you know, a reoccurring topic is that you know, there, are for, there are owners who always want information. Things like, you know, and, and, and you know, the, I guess the reason... It comes up as, you know, they think that the board is spending too much money. Or they're hiding something, you know, and, and, I, and I always tell people, I go, you need to at least go to the board meetings every once in a while. Not just once a year, not just to the annual meeting. I mean, go like once a quarter or every other month, you know. Um, I know it takes, a, it's, a t it's like about an hour, two hours um, out of a month, mm -hmm. right? Um, but they should make an attempt to really go to some of the board meetings so they know what's going on. Um, and the minutes, um, if there's a general manager or a resident manager, hopefully they have a copy of the, of the approved minutes that's available for distribution or to be read. Or right, because right now, I, you know, I think with the technology, you have a lot of uh, associations with websites. Right. Right, and the websites typically have your governing documents that's got your declaration and all the amendments and the bylaws and all those amendments. Those are the best websites. Right, and then they have the house rules, and if you have a building committee, then, <clears throat> then they may have the 
uh, you see those specs for the, right. if you want to put in, uh, uh, you know, uh, re remove the windows in your lanai or remove your lanai out right. or enclose your lanai right. or you want to put in wood floors, you, you need to know what specs and what, what are the requirements. So, so there might be a web that might be one of the items that are on your website. So yeah, I guess for the, for, for, you know, for people who are listening, you know, you know, you need to see if your association's got a website. And, and a lot of the management companies, they give it for free, right. right? But you just need, the association just needs to designate somebody in the building who's going to be like the, what is webmaster. it, the webmaster? Webmaster, right? to upload the, the document. And it's upload. really easy to upload documents into a website. It's right. easy. And so, so that would be the first, and that would probably be the easiest. Right. Because then you can do things at your leisure. You don't have to pay a fee to get copies because you can look at them on your computer or your device. Right. And you know, so that would be the, the, the best thing. So the first thing you do is to see if your, your association has a website and go on there and look for the documents. But assume, okay, let's say you, your association doesn't have a website. Then you might want to go to your resident manager because a resident manager has certain documents like your declaration and the bylaws and the house yep. rules and certain policies, and they even might have a book, a binder with all the minutes in it. Correct, right? correct, correct. And, and so you can look at it for free. Right, right. And you just have to you know, go down and, and make, you know, make nice with the, the site manager or the staff and you know, uh, to ask, for, ask for it. But let's say you don't have a website and you don't have a, a, a site manager with stuff in his office. Now where, where do you go? Now you have to go to the managing agent. Yeah. Uh, the property manager or managing agent to request the documents that you want. But you should probably be pretty, pretty precise as to like which minutes you want to look at because, uh, again, I mean, it's going to take them time to pull it up. Um, hopefully it's current ones, not like 10 years ago stuff. Um, and um, if you want a copy, there, it's, there's a charge to get a copy sent to you. Right. And, and so, so, you know, and, and uh, under the statute, it says that, you know, if you designate that you want it emailed or faxed to you, they can do that. And that way you don't pay the copying charges. Right, right. But you might have to pay an administrative fee for the, you know, for the, to pay for the time for the person on the other side. Right. Who's actually looking for the document, taking it out of wherever it's stored, walking it over to the fax machine or the computer or the scanner so that they can scan it, upload it. And send it off to you, right? Correct. So Correct. you pay. You have, and, and and under the statute, they have to. The association has to tell you before you they send you the documents that you need to pay, and they have to give you an estimate. Right. And in other words, it cannot be a surprise. They they can't send you the documents and say, oh, by the way, here's this bill for a million dollars. Right. You know, they can't do that. Yeah, and it's um, besides the administrative. If they sent you a printed copy. It's a dollar per page, but don't forget, front and back is two dollars. Right. <laughs> so it's not just one single piece of paper. Printing, double sided, would be two dollars. And you know, so that means you can, you know, you can get minutes, you can get financials, you can get your uh, the uh, accounts receivables, payables. You can get a, a list of delinquencies that are over ninety days. And you know, the, and the reason why they make you sign the the, the declaration or the affidavit. So, and for some documents, the statute says you have to sign an affidavit right. saying that you're asking for the re information in good faith and, 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 and not for, uh, and for purposes of uh, supporting the association or the members and not to harm anyone. And I guess talking about the delinquency list, right. that, you know, that is a concern for some board members and, you know, and I, I guess for some unit owners, for some members, I mean, if you're delinquent, you, you really don't want, you know, anybody giving your name out. Yeah, you don't and, want it to be public knowledge. Yeah, public shaming, <laughs> yeah. right, you know. And so, you know, so that's why you're, you're required to file, I mean, sir, do the affidavit, because you're basically told, you know, this is privacy, you know, this is information. And yes, if you're an owner, you want to know who's not paying their maintenance fees, that's fine. But it, once you get that information, it's not, you know, you should not be running out and posting it on the bulletin board, telling your neighbors that, or scanning it, sending it to, you know, half the people. I mean, that, that's, that's really terrible. Well, I mean, you yeah, know, yeah if, if you're concerned about, you know, who's not paying their maintenance fees, I mean, and then you, you could go to the meeting and say, tell, ask, and ask the board, what steps are you taking to 
collect these, you know, because if they're not doing their job to collect the maintenance fees, that means you, the owner, are going to get, your, your maintenance fees may go up next year. Right, right. 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 So that's why there's a legitimate reason why people want to see a delinquents, delinquent list. But, you know, by the same token, you don't want to give it to people who are going to use it to uh, shame people and uh, to put this information out. I mean, because that's not the purpose of giving out the information. Right. And you don't want to approach the other, that person that's delinquent and, and make it known that you know that they're delinquent. I mean, that's that's really so so hurtful, yeah. so malicious. Right, you know? and that's the concern with providing this information. But under the statute, any delinquency that's over 90 days that can be given to unit owners who sign that affidavit, who say they're asking for the information in good faith and they're not gonna use it to harm the association or the members. And, that, and, and, and so that, that, that's one of the reasons why, um, and you know, I guess another reason is, and you know, and I've heard that these things happen. Like somebody wants the managing the managing agent's contract, and and in fact, a request was made to me, uh, you know, as board president from our managing agent, and I said, sure, but make sure you 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 redact any privacy information because right. we, you know, any private phone numbers or a home address or a private email, because we do not want these employees harassed. Well, employees and even um, owners, right. the, the, the mailing list, if it has their emails and phone numbers, they haven't given, given consent. They have to give consent to have that shared. Mm -hmm. And so that needs to stay off the distribution right. list. You know, um, you're only entitled to their name um, and address mm -hmm. that, and unit number, that's it. Right. And, you know, so, so, you know, we have to be really careful about, and, and that's the reason for the affidavit. It's not because we're trying to make it harder to, to for, you know, we just want to make sure that people, when they come and ask for information, and yeah, maybe they're mad at the, uh, at the site manager or maybe at the guy who does the, the, the landscaping and wants to see what he's getting paid, and then they're going to go out and say, oh, you're getting paid too much. That's not the whole, that's not the reason why, this information is disclosed, and and so you know the the board you know has to take steps to make sure that when they give out the information that it's not used improperly. Right. I mean, if you if you're an owner and you know because you're you're paying maintenance fees, you're entitled to this information. But you know we we don't want to give it to you if you're going to use it to somehow beat up on these people right. because you somehow don't like them right. or you don't like how, what how they're doing their jobs. And, and there's a whole process for that. You know, if, you, if, if you're unhappy about somebody, you know, you have to make your uh, frustration or your unhappiness known to the management. Right. You don't do it to the employees. You can do it to the, the managing agent. If it's Hawaiiana or associate or touch tone, you know, you look to find out who your property manager is and you, you tell them, but you don't go and ask for information with the intent that you're going to make this person miserable. Right. And sometimes when it comes to the employees um, wanting to know what they get paid or what, you know, sometimes... The, um, the homeowner, they come home, but they never see anybody around. But it doesn't mean that they were working from 9 to 5 when you were gone. Right. You know, they're doing a bunch of other stuff. So just because when you come home, you don't see them, doesn't mean that they're sitting in their, their unit all day in their air conditioning and not doing anything. Mm -hmm. So some people have to really think hard before they start getting on that bandwagon that the guy's not doing his job, yeah. you know. Okay, well, you know, why don't we just take a break now, and then we'll talk more about the process and, and, and what you can do if somehow you can't get the documents, or if the association stonewalls mm -hmm. and ignores your request. Uh, and, you know, so we'll get back and talk about those issues after the break. Thanks to our ThinkTech underwriters and grantors, the Atherton Family Foundation, Carol Monley and the Friends of ThinkTech, the Center for Microbial Oceanography Research and Education, Collateral Analytics, the Cook Foundation, Dwayne Carisu, the Hawaii Community Foundation, the Hawaii Council of Associations of Apartment Owners, Hawaii Energy, the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, Hawaiian Electric Company, Integrated Security Technologies, Galen Ho of BAE Systems, Kamehameha Schools, MW Group, the Scheidler Family Foundation, 
the Sidney Stern Memorial Trust, Polo Foundation, Yuriko J. Sugimura. Thanks so much to you all. Okay, welcome back to another episode of Con on Cider, and we're talking to Raylene Tenno today, and we're talking about uh, association documents and uh, how you can get them and, or the information that's on them. And so we were talking, you know, basically about, you know, the, the various kinds of documents that you could get, and uh, that includes financials and general ledgers and insurance policies and contracts and delinquent delinquencies and you can also get the election stuff right the ballots right. and the proxies right. and so if you're unhappy after the election you can ask the association you you need to make your request so within 30 days right of the election right and and so um uh, so that means that if you think some something some hanky panky went on <laughs> or some shenanigans i mean you can get the ballots uh you can get the um all the tallies all the tally sheets right uh, the certified, uh, the sign-in sheets right. of the people who showed up. And the actual proxies. And the actual proxies. And, and now, with this, uh, there was a new law last year that uh, extended the time for the associations uh, to uh, dispose of all of these election mm -hmm. documents. Right. It used to be 30 days. Now it's 90 and, days. And if somebody made a request, then you had to hold them for 60 days. But now, with the new statute, you got to hold them for 90 days. So that means that you have 90 days after an election to actually challenge. Right. And then you can, you have to make a request to the managing agent and you, you, uh, then you go down and, you know, you can take a look at all these documents and you can get copies. And the same rules apply if, you know, you, you have to pay reasonable amount for the copies that you're getting and right. you have to pay for administrative services if somebody has to be there to kind of assist in right. providing you with the documents. Right, right. So, and, you know, so basically how long does, is, does, it, uh, does the association have once a request is made to turn over the documents to you? They have 30 days to respond. Okay, and what happens if they don't, what if well, nothing happens? What, what do you do? Okay, so if they don't respond to you after 30 days, then you do a follow-up request. And you really have to be patient through this process because getting mad and, you know, is not going to help. So you really have to be patient and diligent. So um, you do a second request. And then if that doesn't get a response, you do a third request. And that, if you look at the bottom of the RICO complaint form, it also explains that you have to explain to them what efforts you made to get it resolved. Mm -hmm. So the more efforts you show to get it resolved, that's more power in, on, in your hat versus the other people that have never even responded. Mm -hmm. um, so also, um, every managing agent has to have um, a real estate license. So there's a broker in charge mm -hmm. or, and a principal broker. Um, so if even after the third response, or even on a third response, I, you, know, you could send one to the managing agent that you did and then send another one to the broker in charge and hopefully that will get a response because when you make a RICO complaint, it's against the person's real estate license. So hopefully they'll be able to respond and get the ball rolling. Okay. And then so, so RICO is uh, a state agency. And so do they do this for free or do you have to pay them? It's part of Department of Commerce and Consumer Affairs. So it's, it's, a, it's kind of a free thing. Mm -hmm. But you have, to make, you have to do a lot of work. But RICO is kind of backlogged. So, so you have to really make, use that time to make all these re repeated requests. You know, if they don't comply within 30 days, do another one or, you know, but you have to just keep your calendar, mark your calendar with all the days. Okay, and, and basically you're doing a paper trail. Right. right. So that when you get to RICO, you can show them in, 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 that uh, on this day I sent uh, a letter and they never responded 30 days later. Here's my second letter. And, and then what does RICO do? Well, then after you do the complaint, then they will, um, and you show the evidence and make sure you do that little green card, the return receipt thing. Mm -hmm. Um, then they will start to do their investigation as to why it's never been responded to as per statute. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so does that usually end up with the um, association or the managing agent turning over the records? Hopefully so. <laughs> okay, but let's say, let's say in this scenario, you've, you know, you've made 
three requests to the association and they've not responded. You now make a RICO complaint and they ask for a response and then they don't respond. What do you do? You still don't have your records. Yeah. What do you do now? Uh, that's a good one. <laughs> Um, I, I, I really don't know. I really don't know. I mean, what right would you now, recommend? I mean, right now, under the statute, you can do mediation. or. Oh, yeah, that's true, yeah. You can request for mediation. So um, you would have to put the association on notice that you're going to um, um, request mediation And you want to do evaluative mediation okay. because that's subsidized, right? Yes. The other one, yeah. the facilitative mediation uh, just tries to bring the two parties together. Right. And but the evaluative mediation will actually give you a written opinion as to whether or not you're right or wrong. And it's is that binding? It's it's not binding. Okay. But if if you get a uh, a letter that says that the association is wrong, then that would give you more support. If you then because the final uh, the final step is you'd have to file a lawsuit. Right. Then it becomes a civil suit. Right. right. A lawsuit for failure to comply with the statute. Because that's what, that's what, you know, it boils down to. This is part of the law. Right. The law says shall. Right. You will comply right. within 30 days. <laughs> and shall and, is that legal term. Yeah, legal term. to. Yeah, have to. <laughs> that you have to. It's mandatory. <laughs> and, and that means that, you know, after all the attempts that you, and, and you, you made, then, uh, and, you know, by the time you get to this, the circuit court and you have this paper trail of all, you, know, you went and made three requests to the association, then you went and did the RICO complaint, and then the RICO complaint was served on them, and they still didn't comply. And then you went and did evaluative mediation, and you get an opinion that says uh, the, the, the association is in violation of the statute. So now you go to the court and say, okay, now I want an order. I, want, I mean, because I, you know, I, I, I've got this opinion, and I, you know, the law says they have to do it, and I want now an order. And you know, it's terrible that you would have to go all that to that to those lengths. Yeah, and I hope you have good reserves to pay for attorney fees. Yeah, because <laughs> you know, you're really you're really using money that you need to use for your repair and maintenance for attorney fees when it's not necessary. Right, and this is one of those times when you know you really shouldn't be spending legal fees to defend against claims of owners who want records with the statute where and they're very particular they're, they're they're listed in 514 b 154 they're listed they're listed in there it says minutes it says financial statements accounts payable accounts receivable right. contracts insurance policies delinquencies you know over 90 days ballots proxies a sign in list. I mean, so we're talking about, we're not talking about it's every yeah. number. I mean, it's all records. the documents associated with, with um, um, a condo. Right. You and can I, get invoices. Right. You, can, you know, it's listed in the statute. And that's why, you know, I, I think that's why the legislatures get very frustrated when people come and say, uh, we can't get documents from the association. And the answer is, why not? There's a statute that says you will turn it over in 30 days, and 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 you know so that's why you know they kind of roll their eyes and 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 they kind of yell at us. Right. I, I, I I I I can recall <laughs> Roz Baker yelling at us, saying, "Why why is this happening every year? How come these? I mean, it's so easy to comply, and we make a rule, and it says shall, and it says 30 days, and it lists." all the documents that have to be turned over and it says that you know the association can co collect reasonable charges for copying and administrative expenses we, we make it so specific and it's like why isn't it happening you know condos have to the board has to realize that it's an open forum i mean you're using everybody's money that goes into this pot and you're managing it. So they're entitled to know, you know, just like husband and wife relationship. And usually the, sometimes the wife is the one paying all the bills. If the husband asks a question, I mean, you know, all she has to do is say, hey, it went for this, this, and this, you know. I mean, she, in theory, I would hope that she would say it's none of your business, you know, but, you know, everyone's entitled to see where their money is spent. And I really think people need to really make sure that they keep their um, packet that they get at the end of every year that has all their coupons for the following year because that has your insurance it has your budget 
the reserves, um, and all that kind of stuff. So you need to keep that so you can look at it periodically, not mm -hmm. just throw it into a box or throw it into the file cabinet, mm -hmm. because that's your starting point of finding out certain things. From there, you can find out what the employees make, what, you know, how much money is sent for employees. You know, um, some people want to know how much they pay for the managing agent. Well, it's on the financials. You don't need to get a copy of the contract if you just want it for general purposes, mm -hmm. you know. So, you know, look at your financials first before you start doing that kind of request. Sometimes it's easier to find it other means than having to go do that request, you know. And, you know, a lot of condominiums, when they do their budgets, I mean, they have it open. I mean, the, the budget meetings are open for all owners. Right. So anybody who's interested in the minutia that, you know, is discussed, you know, in these budget meetings, you know, is pretty much welcome to, uh, to attend. And, you know, so, you know, to, to me, you know, uh, p people, you know, who are concerned and they want transparency and they want to know where their money is going, they should start going, like you said, they should start going to the board meetings. And the budgets are usually and, starting in September, September, right. October, uh, and it should be definitely done by November. So, right. you know, start going to those meetings if you're really concerned about where the money is going, because that's where the planning starts. Right. And, and I, I know in, in, in our condo, when we have our budget meeting, we have owners there. And, it, and it's, we basically have this big table and everybody's got chairs. And so it's not like the board sits in one place and the owners sit in another. We're kind of like all together. And everybody's chiming in. Mm -hmm. well, what about this? What about that? How do you calculate this and that? And, you know, so this is good. The, the dialogue is good because a lot of times, you know, I mean, I've been on the board for many, many years. And, you know, sometimes you just don't think of things right. that, that, that people will raise when right. we're talking about the budget. Right. And, or they'll say, well, why don't we do it this way? Or, uh, and, or how come you're spending this much money here? What if we do it this? And, you know, so, it, you know, so for having owners participate in the budget meeting is very useful to the it board. It is. Because there's, they can, because they're, I want to say they're kind of like the outside looking in. So sometimes they can see what we don't see. Mm -hmm. you know, or what we missed. And so it, it becomes productive when they're included and they, they're allowed to participate in those discussions. And, and, and another good thing, too, is, yeah, another good thing is having them there is they basically listen to the dialogue and so that they don't come and they figure, well, geez, how come you spent all that money <laughs> on those repairs? And, you know, but they weren't there when we were talking about why we had to do it and, you know, the, the contractors that we interviewed and, you know, and so, you know, uh, when you come to the budget meeting and you hear all the, the discussion and we, we this last time we were talking about a reserve study, half the people in the room didn't know what a reserve study was. Right. right? right. So so they learned. Right. And, and they asked good questions when, you know, when, when we talked about what, you know, who, who, you know who, what goes into a reserve study and how does the board get involved and how does it affect the owners and how does it determine you know what you collect you know from the owners and maintenance fees and what do you set aside for reserves and how do you do that and you know so they you know so they, i think they they really appreciated the fact that yeah. we, we went into that discussion cuz typically your condos are typically first time homeowners you know so they don't know that budgeting i mean they're really still even learning the budgeting process because you know, now that they have a mortgage, they really have to watch their financials, their right. own personal financials. So. And, you know, we've we, we run out of time. And, oh. and so, yeah, <laughs> we were having so much fun. So, you know, we're going to have to come back and, and, and we can uh, continue part on two. with this, this discussion. <laughs> but thank you all for joining us today, uh, talking about condo documents and how you get them and what you can do if you can't get them. And please join us again next week for another episode of Condo uh, Insider about condominium living and people who are uh, affected by that. Thank you very much. Mahalo and goodbye. Thank you. <laughs>